Welcome to the Skull and Skeleton in Art, version five, Folk Art to Pop Culture. My name is Mary Erbis. I'm the gallery director and I'm also the curator of this exhibition. I'm, I'm inviting you to come along on a walk through the exhibition. There's a hundred artists from throughout the United States that are showing 275 artworks that are created in a variety of media. The show is up through November 3rd, but the big day to remember is Thursday, October 26th, which is the costume party reception for the exhibition where you can meet the artists, have a, have a blast with the costumes. And I'm also doing what's called a boneyard market that evening, and there will be artist vendors that will be selling items that are skull and skeleton themed that are a little bit lower price point, like candy and, and jewelry and soap and items like that. So come along for the ride. We're starting the show with George Kokar with his No Evil, which is a, a painted on a skateboard deck. We've got four Raku fired ceramic skulls by Gary DeVoki with that have little red lights that shine on the inside of them. And the hair, the Mohawk hair are actually metal findings from a friend of his, friend of his who works in a machine shop. We have these um, large, large format paintings by Taylor White, which are mixed media on canvas. Got two more skulls of Gary DeVokey's. This is a found object assemblage by Gwen Waite. Gwen's an Akron artist, and if you look, she's using um, the necks of a guitar and pieces of a uh, luggage and, and hand felted pieces. This is a work, work by Rich Sealar, who runs E112 over at 78th Street, and this has um, uh, bottle caps and eight balls and recycled wood. This is a glass mosaic over an electric guitar by Lisa Rushman. I, and if you pay attention, there's a, he's even got a little gold tooth on his head. And I do, do want to kind of stress and, and confirm to let you guys know it's always better to come see the work and see it in person because I can tell you a little bit about the pieces, but sometimes it's fun to see the actual work in itself because the video won't always capture everything. And there's some subtleties that won't show up. Next we have a painting by Kathy Mead Scarrett. It's mixed media on canvas. We have a metal sculpture by Jeremy Tompkins. Here's a painting by Judy Takis. You're used to seeing her doing her chicks with balls and her women with flesh. So here's something different for her where she did a, um, a skeleton. And this is called Sticks and Stones and Tweets and Bones. Here's another piece by Jeremy Tompkins, and I'm hoping that the video shows how cool the, the shadows are that were created. That's the fun part for me as I'm designing the exhibition, that when we get these incredibly cool shadows, it kind of is like a little bit of a bonus. We've got a pen and ink drawing by an artist named Patrick Haggerty. There's, there's another piece you'll see in a minute. Patrick's uh, Institute of Art graduate, as, as is Judy Takas. Here's another large scale painting by Taylor White. And it even has one of those death moths that has the skeleton on it. And here's another drawing by Patrick Haggerty. This is a hand painted silk scarf by Barbara Bloom. And next to it is a um, sculpture by Janet Frazee Wade. And it's called The Bone Song. The, the figure has a flute and actually around the wrist are some little bones. And there is a story about the, um, about the sculpture, about the, the figure that, that I'll, I'll be putting out a booklet on the counter where you can read some of the artist statements and some of the background information on the pieces. Next piece is a um, piece by Stephen Calhoun. It's dye inkjet on archival paper. 
Now this piece is pretty incredible. This is by Laura Lee Hudson. It's enamel on copper and it's actually in three pieces that were pieced together and at any given point some, the, the piece could have warped, something could have happened, it wouldn't have fit. So this is, this is an aesthetic feat. It is also a technical um, feat, the prowess, the, the experience and the expertise that, that Laura Lee has. And then she created the, the wooden tombstone behind it. This is one of those illusion paintings that I absolutely love. This is a friend of mine, Joe Stavik. He went to the Institute of Art with me. It's one of those things where you look back at it and you see the skull kind of created by the architecture in the background and the teeth are the stones in the front. But if you look closely, the, those, there's two flanking skeleton heads where you, you're kind of seeing a profile. This next painting is done by Columbus artist Steve Errett. And then we have a grouping by Danielle Dory Rook of, cer of ceramic stoneware pieces, where she's using raven skulls and she's making boxes and some, some mugs, and we love those red dots. Now this next piece, I'm not sure how it's gonna translate. It's done by Sean Merchant. It's wood ash and engraved glass, and you really see the face when you're in front of it. It's very sub subtle, it's very sublime, and again, it's one of those pieces you, that you have to see in person to really appreciate the, the subtleties. Yep, there's Dan giving us a heads up. Okay, now for those of you who know me, know that this artist, Patty Luna, has captured two of my favorite themes, Barbies and Day of the Dead, where she actually put covered the figures with modeling paste, which actually made them more realistic, and then put sugar skull makeup on Barbie and Ken, and then even check out the cat and the dog, and then in the background are all the tombstones for the different members of the Barbie family. When she sent me this issue, it, this image, and it started loading on my camera and my, on my computer, I was like, oh my god, this is so cool. Here's a multimedia piece um, by Gadi Zamir where he's actually using the py pyrography, which is the burning of the um, wood, but he's also um, used mixed media and leather, and you can't really, I don't know if you can tell, but underneath the, the spider, he's kind of made it into a like, three-dimensional bas-relief where he formed the leather. And then you've got leather and it looks like copper sheeting and other metal for the, for the feathers. And of course I picked up on this, the um, spider theme with this next piece painted by, by Tim Kosovar. And he actually has a um, tattoo studio um, just outside of downtown Willoughby. And his stuff is just awesome. We've got a really fun plate by Lynn Norwood Lofton called Pearls in the Belfry and ceramic. Some people think it looks like a Seder plate. Some people think it's, a, it's for um, oysters. I just think it's amazing. It's so cool. This is a mixed media painting by Alvy Zell. Clevelanders will remember Alvy. She used to do um, enamel work and so when I saw her this past year for the May show and she showed me what she was doing and she took up my challenge to do some pieces with skulls and skeletons and you'll see two other pieces of hers that are that are quilts that are textile pieces something to be a little bit you know some some fun these three pieces are created by Stephanie Miller Davis and these are carved and painted, and so you've got a functional platter and a bowl and a vase. The next two is kind of a very sweet nostalgic piece. Erin Sheckman Caruso, it's called Till Death Do Us Part, and it depicts her and her husband. It's not your normal painting of a couple, but I think it's amazing. And this next piece is by Kevin Bunton. And this is actually a gourd. Oops, it looks like it might be moving a little bit. It's a gourd and that had the stem on it, and then he actually added to the stem to make it look like, um, to make it look a little gnarlier, a little bit more skeleton. I can't even think if there's another word for that. That's just really fun. Here's another piece by Kathy Mead Scarrett called Pearl Diver, mixed media on wood.
And we end this with a piece by another piece by Tim Kosovar called Torment One. It's actually painted on a wooden cutting board in the shape of the state of Ohio. This is a mixed media assemblage by Gail Crum called Skeletons Putt Putt. I love all the little details. She made the little clown figures and, and put skulls on them. And at one point you're supposed to, for um, hole number four, you're going through the torso of a baby doll. I just love how creative some of you artists are. And we have a collaborative piece called Lady Lolita, Grandmother of Many, by Ro Clarkin and Brian Desotel. Ro Clarkin did the stained glass work, and uh, Brian did the metal work, the gears, and the base of the, of the lamp. And we have a few pieces by Ross Bechnik, Bechnik, sorry. Um, these are digitally printed on vinyl. And then in the middle is a ceramic piece by Alan Cradlack. And then down there, this, that, this is a skull that's actually 3D printed, and so you've got to come in and see it moving and, go, and going when you come to the reception on the 26th. The reception is going to be from 6 to 9 p.m. Next we have the poster boy. This is J Jerry Shamray. This is a digital print, digital piece. We're getting some light reflection on there, so please bear with us. And when I chose this piece, I had no idea that the, that movie It was coming out and the clowns and all that. I just thought it was a really cool the image of the clowns. I know it freaks some people out. Next we have another piece by George Kokar, which is called Hell's Kitchen. And then there's a little assemblage piece, mixed media piece of his next to it called Devil Dealer. And here's a soft sculpture piece created by Samantha Myers. And her husband Greg has been making the, um, the upholstered furniture to go with it. Now Sam does all this, a lot of this by hand. She doesn't use sewing machines. She creates the figure, she creates all the accoutrements and the face. It's a little bit dark for her, but I just love it. It's called Death Takes His Holiday. Here's a piece by Billy Nininger. He's in partnership with uh, Rich Sealar over at E112 at, at West 78th Street. And you gotta kinda go up to that little um, magnifying glass to see the skull that's in there. Here's another piece, a collage assemblage piece by Gail Crum. Next to that is a artist Ashley Nagel, and it's called Twins, and it's resin on skateboard. And here's another mixed media piece by Billy Nininger called Midnight Masquerade. This is a fabric paper mache piece by Joyce Stahl called Luna Morta. We have a wall by local clay artist Mark Yazinchak. These are mosaic and ceramic, and Mark makes the tiles and makes the pieces. The skulls puts them all together. You'll see his, um, you know, his little skull head. Some with the, he's now he's doing some with the little crowns on them. He's in, he's integrating, incorporating mirrors with them. I mean, he's got a very recognizable style, and he's been a regular exhibitor in my Skull and Skeleton show. And then we have a, a carved stone piece by John Taylor Lehman with sandblasted stone called Neanderthal and Stone. We have a piece by Scott Holloway. He's from Massachusetts. It's acrylic, ink, gold leaf on panel called Judgment. This is a piece by Jamie Zentz called Sentinels. Jamie is my gallery assistant. She's also a graduate of the Institute of Art. And the way she captures the women on, this, on the birch panel and the, oh my gosh, just the, the, the quality and, and how she captured the eyes and the mouth and 
her work is exquisite. But then again, I guess I can't be too objective. Here's another little sweet little gem of Jamie's called Vanitas. Okay, here's another drawing by Patrick Haggerty. You saw a piece of his earlier. Next to it is a horsehair fired uh, ceramic vase where he actually, the pieces fired, you actually put pieces of horsehair onto the red hot um, ceramic. It's done by Gary DeVoki. And um, like I said, you put the horsehair on it and, it and the carbon from the horsehair transfers onto the pot. And then the, the mohawk hair are, are metal filings. Now this one piece, this is Castutus Kizavicius, and this is an artist who is represented by the Artists Archives of the Western Reserve. This is a linoleum cut print on paper from 1985. Next to it we have three ceramic bottles by Kimberly Chapman. Kimberly is a 2017 graduate at, of the Cleveland Institute of Art. Here's a mixed media piece called Unchained by Day Diane Flights Hughes. This is Madeline Cooper. Uh, it's a mixed media ink drawing. It's a Madeline is actually a student here at, the, at Lakeland Community College. We have a mixed media sculpture by Higo. She's actually a Cuban artist. Lunito Katrina Moon. We have a ceramic piece by Val Grossman. Val Grossman runs the Brick Studio over at, uh, in Waterloo. Next to hers is the Night, Night Mistress by Michael W. High, a ceramic sculpture. Now here's another piece by Kimberly Chapman where she made the, the ceramic bones, but then she created these skull heads with nipple heads to them. It's some, an unusual pairing of imagery. And this way you can see at the back of some of these other pieces. And we have, we've got quite an array of three-dimensional work this year. So it's, every year there's a little different vibe to the show. And it's always fun as a curator, as the installation designer. That's my challenge to make the storyline work, the visual story come to life. This is another piece by Gwen Waite. Again, it's one of these pieces where you kind of need to walk around it to see all the different elements in it. Gwen's an Akron artist. piece is called Civilized. This next piece is Denial of Eponymous. It's acrylic on canvas by artist Ron Hill. Here's, another, here's a painting by Lindsay Parker called Sight Insight, acrylic on masonite. We've got three pieces by Chris Hurdle. Some of these are Spring, Serenity Lamp, and Summer, which are ceramic. And here's Betty Skafka, oil on plexiglass. She's, she's turning 89 next month, and she likes to print her dots, and I love the fact that she alters the, the frame that she created, and then she glued on some bones to kind of make it a more even more fun piece, because, you know, how often do you see a dinosaur skeleton kind of dancing with another skeleton? It's called Dancing in the Cosmos. This is a piece by Becky Grasser called Moose Antler Arch. It's a gum bichromate print on watercolor paper. Becky is an instructor here at Lakeland. We've got two pieces by Lynn, Marilyn Zelay, which are graphite on paper. And she has a very distinct style. She's an incredible draftswoman. Unfortunately, Marilyn passed away a few years ago and so life cut short, but at least we can enjoy some of the art that she created, and she impacted so many different artists who took her classes at Tri-C and Cleveland State and the different areas. Here is a mixed media piece by Carrie Gortz. Carrie is, uh, has a studio over at 78th Street Studios. We've got two mixed media drawings by Eli Bechick. Eli is just is a freshman over at the Cleveland Institute of Art. Got three more pieces by Michael W. High. 
shallow grave one and two and my conversation with death. And if, and if you look closely, the little crow that's on my conversation with death has a human face on it. So I just love these little details that, that seem to come up and kind of add to the whole macabre aspect to the show. Another piece by Ashley Nagel, which is metal and resin on wood. So she cut the metal, and there's a layer of resin and copper and metal flowers and turquoise in there. And these are some unusual photographs by Christina Sadowski. She is in partnership with Rich Sealar and Billy Nininger at E112 at West 78th Street. And these are a little bit different. It's the suffering and the cabinet essentials. There's a, you know, a little bit of a figure of a cat. Okay, and then this sculpture is done by Lisa Kenyon. It's cast bronze, and I believe it's an ostrich egg. I know it's looking a little crazy with all these, these um, shadows that are created by the sun coming in. But again, these are, some of these pieces need to be seen to be believed, need to be seen to be appreciated. And here's another piece by John Taylor Lehman, the farm cat, farm cat hat, head with skull. And if you, when we take the camera to the side of it, you'll see that there's some whiskers poking up on the other side. And we finish this wall out with an artist named Katrina Hicks called The Iron, the Pit, and the Wardrobe. These are two etchings by Sean Crum, etching, aquatint, lip ground, monoprints. This is a piece by Stephen Calhoun called Tears of a Clown, and this is UVC inkjet print on aluminum. And I gave him the challenge to do me a piece with skulls, and I said, you know, it'd be really cool if he could cut it out in the shape of a skull. So this is something that was created on the computer and then printed onto the aluminum. Now these next three pieces, this is an artist named Lisa Lurie from Colorado. I don't know if this is going to show up on the uh, video or not, but she did this accent on the sternum of the, of the figures where it's kind of iridescent and it just looks so cool. And it was one of those things, I didn't even notice it until I actually hung the work and was working on the label. So some of these details are not always apparent even when you have high definition images and, and high pixels. And, the piece to the right, which is transcendental, transcendent twilight, the, the eyeball has got like dichroic glass in it that's just, oh my, it's just incredible, some of the surfaces. We've got such talented artists that give me work and I'm just so happy that they, that they do so and, they, and that they accept my challenge and, and do cool things for the show. We've got two more pieces by Chris Hurdle. This time she has the ceramic skulls, but then she also included some other elements, natural elements, because one's called Goss Between the Sun and the Moon, and the other one is Pacamama, Mother Earth. Here's another piece by Katrina Hicks, What a Lucky Sod, Acrylic on Canvas. We have three pieces by Bridget Daryl Ginley. She's a mixed media artist. A to Z, Disconnected, and Kiss. So she uses all kinds of fun pieces parts. And then there's two ceramic pieces on the shelf by Robert, J Robert Carroll. Robert and is, a, is a twin, which kind of makes something, it's kind of special to me because I have a twin also. He has a twin brother and his twin brother's work is in um, another part of the show that you'll, see, you'll be seeing very soon. This is a crazy piece by Gail Trunick. There once was a man who was hit by a tractor, quite the disaster. So this is actually, I think, the front grill from a, from a um, tractor that she incorporated. Then she makes the paper mache parts and puts them together. And I just love those eyeballs, that the eyeballs are skull heads. Okay, we've got three more pieces by Bridget Daryl Ginley. And then a few more pieces by Robert Carroll. And those two little vase forms are actually um, candlesticks. 
Now this next piece is kind of crazy, well, as if the whole show isn't crazy. This is Matthew Dutton, Life After Death, where he's got antlers and some, I'm not even sure what those things, what those materials are. They kind of look like Super Bowl, and then they're, then they're covered with, with stockings and, and all kinds of things put into it. And then hopefully the video will show what a beautiful um, shadow it casts. So sometimes, t for me, the coolest thing is the shadow that a that a piece casts on the wall. And it also incorporates a, a skull, an animal skull. Here's three more pieces by Jim Kosovar. And of course, I, being a recovering Catholic, I had to include that one with a nun. Man, it, they scared us enough when we were little kids in grade school, but then it's even like this. Uh, I don't know. A little double to the double skull where they're sharing the, the jaw duality. These next two pieces is done by an artist who goes by the name M, the initial M. These are acrylic and copolymer on acrylic, so they're kind of reverse painted on the acrylic. The one's called A Hard Day's Night, and then the ones with orange and, and turquoise, that's called Andy, as, a, as homage to Andy Warhol. This is a, a pen and ink drawing by Madeline Cooper. You saw another piece of hers earlier. This is a painting of a series, actually three out of four. This is Antonio Parente. These are acrylic on canvas. Here's a quilt by Elvi Zell called The Contender. And actually, like I said before, Elvi is a, um, used to be an enamel artist and now she's doing other kinds of things and she took up my challenge to create a piece for the show and she said she had so much fun doing the one piece she did another one. Here's another painting by Antonia Parente, acrylic on canvas. This is an assemblage piece by Lorelei Scazenta called Childlike Spirit Green where she's got mixed media, she's got little pieces of um, sequins and, and trimmings and photos and, and if, I, I don't know if you can tell but those little flames are actually flicker pins that used to be given out by um, the gas company because I have a pin like that and that made me think, hey, where is my pin? And you got a little girl with um, pigtails on. Okay, there's a lot in this case. Uh, the, the glass pieces are created by an artist named Shana Pentecost. She's part of the Superior Art Glass folks. The ceramic pieces are, are um, two women that work together in California named Scalramics. And then in the front is Christina Medusa who did her figures, her skulls, with the little different um, pieces, parts, and accoutrements. You know, one has like a a little skull head, another one has like a, a witch's brew unguent bottle, and, and there's a, a key that looks like a seahorse. It's really fun stuff. And Shana's pieces are blown glass, flat glass, that she then etched the designs into them, whether it's the, the owl or um, the mermaid. And there's another one up that you can cut, the orange one that has the skull in the middle of it. This next row is a group called Scalramics, and this is, these are women that I tried to get in my gallery years ago, never happened, and so it took me, I waited 17 years to show their work. It's Kelly Morse and Natasha Betlikin, and again, they're from, um, from California. On the bottom, we have two different artists. We have the ceramic, the ceramic, um, Dishes by Nancy Hopkins, and then the rest of the pieces are done by Ron Carroll. You saw his, the other pieces by his twin brother in the other case. So there's a lot of fun stuff, and some of it's actually functional. And who doesn't need a, a wishbone ale or anger, anger's vortex bottle for their collection? Here's another piece by Lorelei Scazenta, Childlike Spirit Pink. And 
next piece is a ceramic platter from Washington State artist Irene Lawson called Sugar Skull Platter. And here's a grouping by Mary Sanders Lazenby from North Carolina. She did the mixed media mask and then she also did the figures and she, you know, sews the costumes and puts all kinds of details onto them. And actually the two pieces that are on the shelves is, is a, um, a group there where there are two of them together and she calls these figures her bony bags. So we have a, a Adelita and Maya or Mia in the center and then flanking her is Marco and Pasha bony bags. Nice to meet ya. Here's another piece by Antonio Parente. And then we have three pieces by John Taylor Lehman. These are beer caps on scrap wood. And actually the centerpiece, Joy Today, Grief Tomorrow, is a piece that his wife owned and she so graciously let us borrow it for the show. Okay, we've got two jewelry cases that are jam-packed with stuff, so bear with me. The first set of group, the first grouping is Cassandra Graham, and she created the jewelry that has porcelain skulls and special stones and embroidery on, on ultra suede. She gave me four pieces. Then in the center, we have Dan Levin, the Objects of Curiosity, Dan's from Santa Barbara, and that's a altered playing card deck where he layers it all together and cuts it through. It's pretty incredible stuff. Again, this is one of those pieces that you need to come see the piece so that you can see it up close and see all the details. Here's more Cassandra Graham. Then we have a piece by Jeff Dubay. He is in this, he has a um, showroom at West 78th Street and that is actually enamel on copper with copper. And we have three pieces. These are done by, boy, I hope I don't, Candle Kadir. And what's cool about these are she did the metal work, but this, the ceramic pieces are actually created by Mark Yazinchek. So this is a collaboration between the two artists. Okay, we've got a sterling silver piece by Annette Capelli. That's, that says, it's called W, as in George W. Bush. Then we have these series of musicians by Linda Linda Erdy, and which is mixed media nickel copper. It's called When the Saints Go Marching In. It's the NOLA Funeral Band playing, so New Orleans, Louisiana Funeral Band. The next one are a couple pieces by Pam Pastoric. Pam is also a um, Institute of Art graduate. And if you look closely on the, the pendant piece, the, the eyes, the, the daisies come out in our earrings. So you're able, so you can keep it together as a pendant, or you can take it out and use the earrings as you know, put them in your ears. Next, we have a grouping of from Hudson artist Diane. Sorry, Dana Guile Ray. She gave us a bracelet and two bracelets and a necklace. One of the bracelets is copper, the other is fine silver. Then we have a crazy grouping by Barbara Jacob Schmidt. And these she made her Jack in the Box, which is a copper casket with a Mocha Megane jointed skeleton that comes out. And then she's got some carved cameos that are skulls. And then she also did some Sterling Sylvia Lady Calavera earrings also. Next to that is a grouping by husband and wife, Mary Ann Posh and John Goulias. John's also a twin. And with his pieces, They've got um, petrified wood, sterling silver, powy shell, jasper. So they like to use sterling silver and incorporate natural materials and stones in with their creations. Okay, this is a grouping by Patty McPhillip. She used to actually have a storefront down the old arcade, and she's just now moving to Santa Fe, New Mexico. And these are mixed media pieces. She uses pieces from watches, metal parts, pieces, parts, and so they're kind of a collage effect that she creates. 
In the center is another ceramic piece by Chris Hurdle called Water Spirit, and it's ceramic with mixed media. And then we have two more pieces by Patty McPhillips. To finish out the case, we've got some ceramic pendants by an artist named Jeffrey Allen. These are carved ceramic. And they're flanking another piece by Annette Capelli. And that's kind of a, as she called it, Renaissance Monk. It's mixed media and leather and copper and bones and skeletons. And again, two more pieces of Jeffrey Allen. This is a mixed media piece by Spencer Cowan. Spencer is a student at the Institute of Art and he will be graduating next, next May in 2018. Okay, our next piece is done by my gallery assistant extraordinaire and the man holding the video camera right now, Dan Simone. This is called Hell, Daughter of Loki, Graphite on Paper. We have another piece by L.V. Zell, which is a appliqued pieced quilt called Four Leaf Clover. We've got two paintings by Diane Hepner. Diane has a studio over at West 78th Street. This is um, a hand beaded mosaic piece called Ed Edgar Salvador by Natalie Catania Nelson. She actually has a space over at the Matchworks and she's just now opening a coffee shop there which I believe is opening soon. We've got three more pieces by an artist named Higo, Katrina and the Bread of the Dead. This is oil on canvas. And then she took one of the skull heads and decorated it with all kinds of flowers to kind of keep up with the whole Day of the Dead, Dia de los Muertos event. And here's another piece. I'm not even going to try the, the, the pronunciation of the flower. It's a very specific flower that is used in the Day of the Dead. It's a kind of a marigold. And when they decorate their um, the cemeteries in Mexico, they use that flower. This is one of two watercolors by artist Nancy Lick. It's called Memento Mori 1 and Memento Mori 2. Here's her second Memento Mori piece. So now what we're going to be doing is the, this case that is jam-packed with stuff. So we're going to start on the left, on the top, and it's pieces by, whoops, I guess we're going to start on the right, okay. Uh, this is Amanda Plavin, that is actually a traditional sugar skull with a sh sugar skull decorated. She's going to be here during the Boneyard Market with some of her sugar skulls. Next to that is a piece by Val Grossman, who has Brick Studio. We've got three pieces by Renee Tay. These are really fun because she puts together pieces, parts, and and if you look at the little naughty devil boy teapot there, something a little fun. And then next to that are, are, is some ceramic jewelry by Danielle Dory Rook and then a, a mug that she also created. Okay, here's some more Renee Tay, Tay pieces with the orange teapot and the little poison teacup. And then we have a grouping by Cincinnati artist Terry Kern. She's got pins and necklaces and little special cups, little shot glasses that give you um, the recipes for certain drinks that she's doing. We've got another piece by Renee Tay, which is the green teapot. And then next to that is Leslie Edwards Humay, Dead on My Feet, which is a sculpture. Leslie also is part of the, gr the group called Gallery Plus, which is at West 78th Street on the west side of Cleveland. We've got Ceramic Ocarinas by Deborah McGroder. Her, she's in with a couple other people called the, the Mud Sisters. 
Then you've got some little ceramic um, plates by Nancy Hopkins. And then these next three pieces is an artist named Kim, Tim Kowalczyk. And what he did, especially the one in the middle, that is not corrugated cardboard. It is ceramic to make, make it look like corrugated ca cardboard. It's kind of like a ceramic version of, of trompe l'oeil, where you make something look so realistic when that's not what it is. And then the other skulls he created were meant to kind of look like um, styrofoam skulls. And he paints them accordingly so that you really, you kind of look at them like, what are those made out of? And then we have one of our youngest artists represented, Soren Simone, who is our, the son of our videographer and my gallery assistant. This is a, a plaster piece that he hand painted. And obviously this is his first show as an artist, to be, and I just thought his work would be fun to include it into the collection. Okay, our last wall, we have a painting by Taylor White, Oil on Canvas. And this is an illustr illustration by Karen Sandstrom. Karen Sandstrom is a writer. She, she writes for the Plain Dealer. She's a political cartoonist. She's an illustrator. And it's called Hell's Half Acre, A Gated Community. So I guess a cemetery would be a gated community. I love her puns, her plan words. Just the graphic quality of the piece is just pretty cool. Then we have a mixed media piece called Deadbolt by Bob Walls. Now this next piece, Laurel Herbold, is kind of fun. Laurel has a studio over at West 78th Street, and it's called Death by Cheese, and the box is actually for Kraft American Cheese, and the bottom right corner was actually chewed apart by a, by a mouse, so I think it's pretty cool. And those are stones from um, River, you know, Lake Stones from Lake Erie that she painted and made into the assemblage. And then the last piece in the collection is a piece by Taylor White called Blunt Force Trauma. It's oil on canvas. Okay, we're going to finish off the video walkthrough with uh, images of an ofrenda. An ofrenda is the altar that's created to honor the, the souls of the living. They believe that the souls can't um, taste, but they can smell. So what you do is you create an altar in their memory, and you, you put cigarettes and and water and so uh, soap and, and a cloth so they can wash up if they need to. You put their your, their favorite food so that they come back to visit the, the their friends who they've left behind. You see um, cemeteries decorated all throughout Mexico in the same way, and there's very specific colors and e there's very specific things on the ofrenda that are are very symbolic. We've got the the the, the corn the the Indian corn, um, the orange flowers, the marigolds, you've got candles, you've got um, uh, the skulls, like I said, you've got the water, we'll have fruit out later. Um, and I also did create a handout that explains to you about the ofrenda, about the, the cultural significance of it, and it's all kind of adds to the whole, I, the whole event of the Day of the Dead, Dia de los Muertos. And again, I want to remind people, you're invited to come visit, join us on Thursday, October 26th for the costume party reception and the Boneyard Market here in the gallery. You'll get to meet the artists, although I will, I'm not even sure I'll recognize them because people will be in costume. It's always fun. It's free. It's open to the public. And then if you, just, if you want to hang, out, hang around afterwards, the official um, Halloween party that's sponsored by Lakeland Community College, that starts at 9. So our festivities are from 6 to 9 p.m. I hope you enjoyed our video walkthrough. I hope you can come check out the, the show and see the incredible piece of artwork. And I hope you enjoyed joining me on my journey. So thanks again and have a great day.